transpiration results from photosynthesis because stomata need to be opened to allow carbon dioxide into the plant. This diagram shows a close-up view of the underside of a leaf showing the closed stomata. The stomata open to allow carbon dioxide in for photosynthesis and they also allow water to evaporate out away from the leaf. Any factors increasing the rate of photosynthesis will also increase the rate of transpiration. This happens due to the link between transpiration and open stomata. Can you think of what else might increase the rate of transpiration? Transpiration rate is increased when temperature, air movement and light intensity are increased. This diagram shows the sort of environment in which transpiration would be very high. Any factors that increase the rate of evaporation will also increase transpiration rate. So if it's hot, bright and windy, there will be a high rate of transpiration. You need to be able to explain how different factors affect the rate of transpiration. For example, high light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis and therefore the use of water, with the result that this will increase the rate of transpiration. Light intensity refers to how bright a light is, and this will increase transpiration due to increasing the rate of photosynthesis. This is covered elsewhere in the course. What are the consequences of hot temperatures? Increased temperature results in more evaporation of water from the leaf surface due to more particle movement. In this diagram, you can see particles that are cool. When particles are cool, they have less energy and so they don't move around that much. When the temperature is increased, for example, when we heat water up, then the particles move more because they have more energy. This increased energy makes it more likely that the water molecules have enough energy to break their intermolecular forces and evaporate into water vapour. Remember, intermolecular forces are the attractive forces between molecules. For the exam, you need to be able to explain that increasing temperature increases evaporation and therefore increases transpiration. This is similar to sweating on human skin, which cools us down, and has a similar cooling effect on leaves. So how does increased air movement affect transpiration? Increased air movement also results in more evaporation of water from the leaf surface due to more particle movement. So if there's an increase in air movement, for example on a windy day, there's an increase in evaporation and also an increase in transpiration. A breeze can help water evaporate and can also help to carry away water vapour that has diffused out of the leaves. So for the exam, you need to be able to explain that increasing air movement will increase evaporation and therefore increase transpiration. How does light intensity affect transpiration rate? Increased light intensity increases the transpiration rate. Remember that increased light intensity means brighter light, such as the light that comes from the sun. Light stimulates the stomata to open wider to allow more carbon dioxide into the leaf for photosynthesis. More open stomata will allow in more carbon dioxide for increased photosynthesis, and the open stomata will allow more water to pass out of the leaf and will therefore increase transpiration. This link between light intensity and photosynthesis is covered in more depth elsewhere in the course. So what conditions might decrease the rate of transpiration? Transpiration rate is decreased when humidity is increased. The word humid means that there's lots of water vapour in the air. It can become humid when it's moist and warm, such as if it rains or in places like the rainforest. This diagram shows the bottom surface of a leaf as before with an open stoma and these are water molecules. Water vapour that evaporates from the leaf diffuses out through the stomata due to a concentration gradient. Remember, particles will always diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. In increased humidity, there is a lower concentration gradient for diffusion between the leaf and the air as there's a higher concentration of water molecules around the leaf. This means there's less evaporation and a lower rate of transpiration, and you should be able to explain this in the exam. Plants control water loss by closing their stomata. In addition to describing the role of stomata and guard cells in regard to controlling water loss, you need to be able to discuss adaptations that enable organisms to survive in the conditions that they live in. This diagram shows a cactus. Cacti have adaptations which allow them to survive in hot, dry environments. 
Cacti are adapted by having stems that photosynthesize and a small surface area to volume ratio to limit water loss. So cacti limit water loss by not having leaves and hence the stems photosynthesize. They also have a small surface area to volume ratio which also limits water loss. And their stomata only open at night which helps to reduce water loss. What other adaptations do some plants have to reduce water loss? Marum grass has adaptations that reduce the surface area over which water can be lost by evaporation. This diagram shows a cross section of a marum grass leaf. Marum grass have rolled leaves which decrease the surface area that water can evaporate across. These leaves also have pitted stomata. This is where the stomata are sunk inside pits. This is to decrease the surface area for evaporation. A reduced surface area leads to less evaporation and therefore a lower rate of transpiration. So then, fat stems, a lack of leaves and rolled leaves are examples of adaptations that plants might have to minimise water loss. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Biology course. See you there.